This is a brief introduction showing several ways to use live video in wood turning projects. I demonstrate using equipment that I have acquired, but you can adapt these setups to your own tools and techniques, just be creative. I will create videos that go into detail for each of these configurations, and I encourage others to share the way they use videos in their own projects. These tools and techniques can be applied to a wide variety of tasks. Turning, hollowing, embellishing, carving, piercing, coring, and pyrography are all likely candidates. This started because I wanted to make it easier for Lauren to draw on shaving brush handles and jewelry. She was wearing head-mounted magnifying glasses. I mounted an iPad mini on her workstation, and here she is using the camera app to view the workpiece on the screen. Note that she can pinch to zoom and that the iPad and iPhone cameras focus very closely. Another setup uses a webcam and a tablet. Pinch to zoom is not available, but the camera is small and also allows very close focus. Here, an iPhone wirelessly transmits its images to an iPad mini. Other configurations can send the iOS video to a TV screen via HDMI or through AirPlay. A great use is when she needs to draw a figure based on an existing graphic, shape, or logo. I used an editing program on the device to extract the image from the background, and I added a thin border around the graphic to make the tracing easier. Now she can use the Camera Lucida app to overlay the graphic onto the live camera feed. She can size and position it as needed. Once in draw mode, we can adjust the transparency, vertical slider, and zoom levels, making it easy to compare the graphic to the tracing. Zooming in on a specific section of the image helps with tracing details. The live video and the graphic stay together. Here she's using the tools to check her progress. Overlaying a graphic on top of a live video can be used at the lathe in several ways. For turning a spindle project, it often helps to have the target shape on the screen. An iPhone is mounted above the workpiece. The image is sent via an HDMI cable to a small monitor mounted to a switchable magnet that attaches to the headstock. The phone is mounted on an XY stage to make positioning the graphic very easy. I adapted this microscope stage, and a friend has also produced a complete 3D printed XY stage that he'll make available. Whenever possible, isolating the camera from the lathe vibrations is preferred. This phone is mounted to articulated magic arms that are attached to the ceiling. A similar setup can be used for hollowing. Here an iPhone is mounted to a captured hollowing rig where the laser would normally go. A graphic of the cutter head is overlaid on the live video, so when the cutter disappears inside the workpiece, the position of the cutter can still be seen. Using a graphics editor on the phone, it takes only a couple of minutes to prepare the cutter graphic. The background is removed and a colored border is added to represent the desired wall thickness. The file is saved in PNG format, which preserves the transparency. The ruler makes it quick and easy to determine the border thickness. Multiple colored borders in a single graphic could indicate target wall versus bottom thicknesses. The editing steps will vary depending on the graphics program being used, but the tasks are similar. Remove the background, create the border, adjust the opacity to have that cool ghosting effect when the cutter enters the workpiece, and save the file. Back in Camera Lucida, the graphic is placed over the live view of the cutter. The XY stage and the registration marks on the cutter make quick work of aligning the images. When the cutter enters the workpiece, the graphic remains on screen and the red border shows how close you are to the target thickness. A 16-inch television is mounted above and to the left of my lathe's headstock. It displays the video output from the phone.
Instead of using a mobile phone, a webcam can be mounted above the cutter and displayed on a computer or tablet. Programs control the camera's zoom and focus, and the video can be displayed full screen. An editing program, in this case free, is used to prepare the cutter graphic. The graphic is overlaid using the PIP, that's picture-in-picture, -picture, feature of this also free webcam viewer. The video is then viewed on the laptop computer screen or an external monitor. Although there's no border in this overlay graphic, one could easily have been added. Finally, a very simple and inexpensive setup using a closed circuit TV camera. The camera is tiny, focusable, and has a narrow 55 degree field of view and costs only $35. The video is displayed on a TV or any monitor that can take a basic composite input, typically indicated by a yellow RCA style connector. A ruler is placed below the cutter, in this case held on by a magnet. The outline of a cutter is traced onto a clear plastic sheet attached to the TV or monitor screen. Using a ruler as a guide, I add a red outline to indicate the desired wall thickness and then complete the basic drawing. Once again, as the cutter disappears into the workpiece, the position of the cutter remains visible. These are just some of the ways that live video can be used with wood turning projects. I hope you find this overview useful and can adapt the techniques into your own work. Now go and turn safely.